Hi, shalom, friends. So there's a yeshiva in Israel um, where young married men study after the marriage for two, three years, and then they, uh, I guess, go and get a profession. So there's one young fellow, after a year of marriage, he comes out with a big smile and he says to his friends, Mazel tov. What's the Mazel tov? My baby uh, was born, a beautiful baby girl. And they all say Mazel tov. And uh, he sits down and studies. The rabbi who gave a lecture overheard the word Mazel tov. So he comes over to this fellow and he says, uh, what's the Mazel tov? Let me extend my good wishes as well. He says, well, I had a baby girl yesterday. Oh, beautiful, beautiful mother as well, wonderful. Are you going to be making a celebration on Shabbat? He said, yeah, I'll, I'll make a small celebration. And the way he said it disturbed the rabbi. He says, one second, a small celebration? I want to ask you, he says, if you would have been married for eight years and not have any children, and then your wife would give birth to a baby girl, and you're a father, would you make a small celebration? He said, Rebbe, after waiting eight years for a baby, I'd make a very big celebration. So Rabbi looks at him and he says, so just because God was gracious to you and did not make you suffer for eight years, that's why you're making a small celebration? End the story, but very, very incisive. We always make these big celebrations when there's a lot of darkness and we get out of the darkness. But why don't we make big celebrations when we simply have a lot of light? <laughs> I saw a very funny cartoon where you see the different parts of a body, each one arguing who's in charge of, of waking up. The head says to the body, I decide when we're going to get up. And uh, the heart says, no, no, when I want to get up, that's when we get up. And each organ says something, and suddenly you see the bladder. I decide when you get up. Okay, it's cute. But imagine if you needed a catheter. And then suddenly this very, very ordinary daily exercise in getting rid of a waste product is a big spiel. And then, thank God, when the catheter is taken out, you really want to celebrate. So why do we have to wait for the catheter to appreciate that God made the body function beautifully? You know, um, there are a believing Jew and someone in general that has a strong belief in God, when things happen very negative, almost tragic, they shrug their shoulders and they actually say like, it makes no sense, why did this happen? And, and they don't question God, they, rather they accept. And, and they give a sigh like, oh, we can't understand why God allows for these things. True, true. There are things that the human mind cannot encompass and then we resort or revert, or maybe a better word would be, we display, it came from God, so God probably, not probably, He knows what, what He's doing. One day we might understand. So this, this is when it's a tragedy. How about a simcha, a joy? Do we, do we ascribe it to God? Here, let me bring it down to something that happened this week. God gave us a Passover present. A couple of days ago, a uh, evil regime, Iran, at least those that are in it, rained 300 missiles and drones and who knows what to destroy Israel and to inflict as many casualties as possible. There's no way that 300 missiles can be intercepted to the extent that, the, that there is hardly any damage to a country and, and to people. And in front of our eyes, 
in the secular year 2024, a miracle at 99% or so they claim uh, the missiles did not even reach airspace. How do we respond? Well, the IDF is very accomplished. Oh, America helped us. Do you know? Uh, e even Saudi Arabia told us. Wait, one second. When it's a tragedy and Jews die, we say it's from God. When it's a miracle and Jews are saved, that's not from God? It's like silly to say something like that. We actually experienced a real miracle. And I don't want to say it's wasted, but I would merely say that the conversation should be about what, what came from heaven, a protection and a yarmulke from heaven, not how great all of the military people were. We're thankful to them, and certainly the miracle flows through them, but it's not natural or normal. I mean, if you want to talk about the vaunted intelligence, just five, six months ago, October 7th, we had the same intelligence and they did not do a very good job. So if that is somehow orchestrated by heaven, this certainly was orchestrated by heaven. So yeah, dance the horror and reinforce the belief that God is with us and protects us. What is the main theme of Passover? Okay, you know, uh, from slavery to freedom. How did we change from being a slave to a free person? Essentially, we, we could use the language of when we stopped thinking and feeling the oppressiveness of nature, and we allowed ourselves to experience divine revelation, at that moment, we became free. You see, Pesach, or Passover in English, is about essentially miracles. And when we talk about the 10 great miracles, the 10 plagues, it's not to remind us what happened 3,300, I think it's 36 years ago. It's to remind us that what happened in the year 2024 is from Hashem. And what happens to us today, tomorrow, and yesterday is from God. And once a year, on the festival of Passover, we get a reinvigoration. It's almost as if we're getting a booster shot, where the antibiotics, which fight against materialism, are strengthened. We are a miraculous people. God can create a nation from within a nation. There can be a birth of, of a great people. Well, we are that great people, and we are anticipating further growth with the coming of Mashiach in the Holy Land. So I'll end off with, wake up and smell the miracles. It's coming our way. Shalom.